I create new videos each week, so don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. So you see this beautiful pearl drum set behind me? Well, it didn't always look like that. It used to look like this. So how did I go about transforming my old drum set from looking like this to looking like this? Well, that's exactly what this video series tackles. This video is part four in the final part of the series, where I'm gonna talk about how I rubbed out the new clear coat finish to a high shine. That's what's coming up next, so stay tuned. Now, if you found this video first and you missed the other parts, I put some links to parts one, two, and three down in the description below. Okay, so here we are at the final step. And what we're gonna do is polish these drums out. Now, I found that no matter how careful you are and how much you really take your time and apply that last few coats of polyurethane, especially the white bond stuff, you can't help but get little dust nibs and little hairs and things inside of the finish. And whenever you see a nice finished drum, you really don't see any of that stuff. So the trick is to rub out or polish out the finish once it's all done. Now to do that, what I've learned, and I've learned this the hard way, is that you have to let this polyurethane finish dry. Like you really gotta let it cure. And that could take about two weeks. So I've actually let these drums sit for about two weeks after I applied the final coat. Now it's ready to be rubbed out. Now remember, this is a learning curve for me. And what I've learned in doing this is that the biggest mistake I made was not leveling out these drums before I even stained or did anything. Uh, these drums have seen a lot of road battle and a lot of gigs and a lot of uh, traveling. So there are some dings and nicks and pits inside of this shell, but I thought it was smooth enough and since I figured we were adding the polyurethane, I figured that would fill in all those gaps. It doesn't really work that way. So ideally, the best thing that I should have done, and probably the biggest mistake I made, is I should have gotten some wood filler, filled in all the hills and valleys, and really sanded this down to a completely smooth surface. It would have made finishing these drums a million times easier. I didn't do it like that, so I kind of have to deal with some of the, uh, the results not being as flawless as I'd like. But if you're really going for a flawless finish, you want to start your project that way. Make sure the drum shell itself is absolutely perfect. File down and even all around before you even start staining. That being said, we're gonna do the best we can with what we got. So looking online at the best way of rubbing out and finishing these drums were these abrasive compounds. Uh, and basically what this is, this is like a liquid that has grades of sand in it. So basically the liquid itself is spread across the surface and it cuts down the finish based on how much sand is inside of the compound. Now what I have here is a heavy cut which has more abrasive in it, followed by a medium cut, which is slightly less. And then you got your fine cut, which is even slightly less than that. Now I'm using the Meguiar's version, but there is a whole bunch of brands that offer the same kind of idea. But from what I read online, this stuff works great. And I've actually tried it on one drum and so far the results have been pretty good. Now I'm gonna go through this whole process on this drum with all three of these compounds. And then I'm gonna use the scratch and swirl remover which essentially is like an ultra fine cut. So it's the same thing as this last one, but with much less abrasive to it. And then finally, I'm gonna to top it off with the paste wax and we're all done. Okay, you ready? Let's go through this whole thing. Step one with this. What I've learned, <laughs> since I've already done this on the 14 inch drum over there, this stuff works great, but it makes a mess. So it's gonna spray all over your shop. Uh, and you probably can't see it in the video, but all of my tools over here have all these fine little granules of this glaze. It's kind of spread across all over the place. And unfortunately, some of the hardware that I finished also had a bunch of that, which made me have to go back and clean all the hardware, which is kind of a pain in the neck. What I'm gonna do is get something to just kind of cover this. A couple of things you wanna set up before you start this process. First thing you kind of wanna make sure you have together is different rags. Now, why this is important is I have a different cleaning or wiping rag for every grade of compound that I'm using. You don't want to turn around and start mixing the compounds together. So I don't want to wipe off the medium grade stuff with the heavy grade rag because that'll introduce more abrasive to the surface. So you got to really keep your rags separated. Okay, likewise, to go through this, you want to make sure that you're using something along the lines of this. Once again, this is a hook and loop, which is like Velcro, that fits with the orbital sander. And you want to use a different pad for each compound. So I've labeled each of my pads. This one is the heavy pad for the heavy cut compound. And I'm going to start with that one. 
Uh, I got a package of these, all different colors. Some of them are more firm than others, so with a heavy pad, I'm using a heavy compound, and as they get less firm, I'm moving across the spectrum of compounds. Now, before I get started, this is super important. I've used an oil-based polyurethane to finish these drums. That means in between coats, when I sanded, I used mineral spirits to clean the drums off and you know, wipe away all the excess and wet sand and whatnot. You have to use mineral spirits because mineral spirits works with your oil-based stains. You don't want to mix water and oil. It will mess everything up. Trust me, I've done it. However, at this point, I've let these drums cure and this finish has dried for up to two weeks. So at this point now, since I'm not planning on adding any more finish to this, I can use water. And that's what they recommend you do for these compounds, is that you wet your pads, you wet your surface very lightly. I'm using a little bit of soapy water inside of a straight spray bottle, and that's gonna give the surface a little lubrication so you don't scorch or damage the finish that you've done. Okay, step one, just gonna lubricate this pad up a little bit with some water. Step two, I'm gonna take our heavy cut cleaner, shake it up. Now I'm gonna apply this to the pad, not crazy, just a little swirl like that, and then I'm just going to spread it around a little bit. Now, like I said, this is gonna spray all over the place. So I put a very light layer of water on the shell itself, and to minimize that, I'm actually going to take this and just dab it. Now this is where this roller assembly that I made really, really helps. As you notice, I'm just kind of putting it around and just putting these little honeycomb hex shapes right onto the shell so I can tell exactly where I'm putting the compound. Making sure it gets all the way across the drum. Good. Now I'm gonna make sure the orbit sander is right on top. I'm gonna turn it on. Make sure you keep it moving. Now I went around the whole shell two times. Uh, you might need more than that. It depends on how clean your finish is. I know with my other drum, turns out after I went through it one time, it revealed a lot of sags and runs. Probably in one of the coats, I probably overcoated. I put too much uh, polyurethane on there in one shot. And it just made these little sags and bleeds that I didn't really see until I used this heavy cut compound. This drum looks like it's a little bit more solid. So I'm gonna start with this. Now, since I went through this, I'm gonna give this a couple of minutes just to cool down because you actually do add a little bit of friction and that heats up your finish a little bit. So I'm gonna give this like five minutes or so just to cool down. And then I'm gonna take my rag and I'm gonna wipe this whole thing down and make sure I get rid of all the abrasive. Depending on what it looks like when I'm done, I may need to do this again with the heavy cut just to help level and even out what I got going on. But if everything looks nice and even and level, I'll move down to the medium cut. So now I'm gonna take my heavy cut rag a little bit of water, and let's wipe this stuff off. Again, this roller assembly is clutch when you're doing this. And if you haven't checked out the video that I did on how to build this thing, I would say go back and it's worth taking the time. It wasn't particularly expensive, and it really, really made this job so much easier. So now wiping this off, I have a little bit of a dull sheen for my finish, but as it turns out with this system of using these different finer grade compounds, it actually does a really nice job shining it up. Okay, so that's about it. And this is actually pretty even all the way around. So now here we go, once again, wash, rinse, repeat. We're gonna do the same exact thing, but we're gonna use our medium cut compound and try it again. Lubricate the pad, shake our cleaner, get a little swirl, not too much. I'm gonna use a different finger here. I used my index finger before, using my middle finger now. I'm gonna lubricate this drum very light, as I mentioned. Do not do this, and then expect later, if you mess it up, to add a coat of polyurethane. Because even if you think you washed off all that water and dried it, the next coat of polyurethane will have little round beads of just circles that'll just be spotted all over your finish, and it'll be inside of that layer of poly and really make a mess. Then you're just gonna have to sand that all away and start over again. Um, I know this because I did it, so <laughs> don't do that. Beat this around. 
Okay, same thing. We're gonna sit here, we're gonna wait for this to cool down, and then we're gonna wipe it off. Okay, that should be significantly cooled down. I'm going to take my medium rag, give it a little bit of water, and we're gonna take this medium finish off. Now what I love about this stuff is that as you go through the grades of compound, you're also polishing these drums so you don't get that same kind of haze that happens with sanding. So here's my fine pad. Let's get the fine cut cleaner, shake it up, dampen the workpiece. Okay, we're gonna add our compound. Now we're gonna dab this across. I'm also doing this as much as I can against the grain. Same thing, we're gonna let this cool down and I'll see you in a few minutes. All right, we're back. Gonna grab my fine cut piece of rag here. Give the drum a little wetness, a little lubrication. And let's take off this compound. Now when I take it off, you notice I'm going with the grain. You just remember it does have an abrasive in it, so I kind of want to take it off with the grain. Now, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but we already have a nice shine going on here. All right, next step, we have our scratch and swirl remover or ultra fine cutting compound. So for that, the ultra fine. Shake it up, a little swirl. Easy to remember, got four fingers, four different compounds. Use a different finger for each compound. Add your dabs and let's swirl it up. Okay, this is the last time, so give it a couple of minutes and then we'll uh, wipe this off. Okay, here's my ultra fine rag. A little tacky to the touch, so turns it into a little bit of a slurry. It's easier to wipe it off. And I'm looking at this, all those little dust nibs and imperfections are just gone. They're just wiped away. Any little pieces of hair, anything that's settled into the finish, gone. It's smooth as glass. And I can feel it even with the rag. Now again, this would be even more perfect if I had leveled the drum properly, filled the holes. But I did kind of want this drum to look a little bit like it's been beaten up, because it has been. So I didn't want it to be perfect, but that would have made finishing a lot easier. You want to make sure the surface is nice and dry, because you don't want to use water when you apply wax. I'm going to go and feed my babies, then I'll come back and wax this thing up. Babies are fed, drum is nice and dry. So here, we take our Johnson's Paste Wax, Let's see if I can open it, ah, there we go. Microfiber rag, you could also use a pad, I just don't have one on hand. Wrap it up, I'm wrapping it in a foam roller that I had left over. Now what I'm going to do, is I'm going to apply some wax and I'm going to just dab it all along the drum. Now once again, you don't spray the drum first, the drum's got to be nice and dry. So I would even take a rag and dry it all off one last time. Now it looks like this drum's all dabbed in, so I'm going to take this and just apply this wax. And you go straight, you can go with the grain, it doesn't really matter so much, just make sure you get an even coat around the whole drum. All right, we're all lubed up. Now what I want to do is let this dry for a good 10, 15 minutes at least and come back to wipe this off. All right, we're back and I'm just going to start taking the wax off of this drum. Now, the more you polish this, the better it's gonna look. I think we could call this drum finished. Okay, so here we have this one. This is the one we did yesterday. So I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the same process on the bass drum. Then the final step will be to attach all the hardware. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you think I did this right? Do you think I could have done things better? Let me know in the comments. And if you dug what I did, go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more cool drum stuff. And if you don't like what I did, subscribe anyway so you can go ahead and beat me up in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.